Hidden amongst its famous rolling hills, the Drumlin County of Monaghan boasts some of the most beautiful lakelands in Ireland. In the west of the county, along the border with County Fermanagh, some 31 lakes lie within a five mile radius of Clonus Town, each one identified by its own unique history, folklore and nature. Straddling jurisdictions between Clonus and Maharavili, nestled between rivers Lackey and Finn, lie a very special community of lakes known as the Kilruski Lock Cluster. This assemblage of small lakes, along with several others, are also referred to as the Maravili Mar Locks, and include the likes of the Kilruski Lock or Horseshoe Lake, Production Lock, Summerhill Lock, and Dummies Lock. And all are unique because of their calcium rich and historically low nutrient water chemistry. Looking at this tiny cluster of lakes, we can see the micro effects of human interaction with the land and how small changes in water chemistry can have life changing effects. The waters that flow through the surrounding landscapes and feed these water bodies drain through a limestone bedrock underground, which sheds its calcium as water passes through it. Mankind's actions also affect the delicate chemical balance. To highlight this, we have selected two endangered types of water organisms, stoneworts and crayfish. Stoneworts are a type of plant-like algae which are quite rare in Ireland and across Europe. These plant-like algae represent an ancient stage of evolution. Our land plants are likely to have evolved from such water organisms. They can exist in this delicate balance of calcium rich water. With an exoskeleton, the calcium also supports nationally and internationally endangered white clawed crayfish. Quite naturally, lakelands do change to boglands, but usually over thousands of years. What have we learned in the past? One thing about Irish history and in Ireland, there was very little value put on wetlands generally. In fact, if you look at the maps, the ancient maps, even of the 19th century or the 18th century, these were described as unprofitable lands or, or waste ground. They were seen not even as the lakes themselves might have had some value, but the wetlands surrounding them had absolutely no commercial value. And so they were seen as the enemy of commerce, the enemy of, of progress. You had massive uh, re reconfiguration of the landscape of wetlands with large channels being dug through them as famine relief works. And of course, if it made some land profitable, it had a huge impact in the lakes that were supplied by those lands, that were served by them, because now you had a conduit for all of the organic matter to get into the lakes a lot quicker. And a good example of that is Ramage's Lock, or as we called it growing up in Clonus, the Blind Lock. It was named Ramage's Lock after a family from County Derry that had come over with the Huguenots and had established a lace industry or a linen industry in County Derry. If you like all of this uh, landscape was, was, was perfect for the linen industry and of course Clonus would become in South Ulster one of the primary centres of linen production. Clonus, Ballybay, Good Hill, these were the great markets and Ramages brought that type of prosperity. But of course the consequences of, of this industry is that there were, was much more nutrient loading going in into the lock itself. The process that normally would have taken maybe a thousand years happened in this instance in the space of just a couple of hundred years. So when we think about it, this lake, if you like, it was impacted by a linen industry. Following that, it was subject to land drainage to the north, which obviously changed its um, features as well. And then, of course, with the construction of the road, and then beyond that, then we built the creamery. And then it was the, the meat factory, the pig factory. And as if all of that wasn't enough, showing, if you like, that we had learned nothing in the space of two or 300 years, Ramages or the blind lock became the town dump. In living memory 
All these lakes were crystal clear. This thick green blanket is algae bloom and it's suffocating the lake and its inhabitants. There is a cross-border effort to assess and diagnose the Kilruski Lock Cluster. The detective work has to come first and it's actually, so the first step in the improvement is knowing what's going on and then having the plan. Ben Malone from the local authorities' waters program came to help assess the issue. Across Ireland we're having a, a sizable increase in the amount of lakes and water bodies that are increasing in the amount of nutrients that are prevailing in them, which means the species that depend on low nutrient water bodies are being squeezed out. You have the likes of the protected uh, white clawed crayfish. Um, you also have uh, the likes of uh, your carophyte meadows, which depend on n uh, low nutrient water bodies. If there is an increase in nutrients and in an increase in plant life or algal growth, there is a, a, a serious competition for light and for habitat space. Um, so they begin to be squeezed out once you have that extra competition imposed on them. And that is once you have your algal blooms, which are triggered by an increase in nutrients and increase in temperatures and the ambient environment that they need. Well, they get to a certain stage when they get to end of life and they begin to die off. And the algae will then float to the bottom or sink to the bottom, I should say. And when they begin to sink to the bottom, they do, like all plants do, they begin to rot. So bacteria in the lake will begin to break down the algae and they consume, in that process, a lot of oxygen. So they deplete oxygen at the lake bed. This is an additional pressure to the carophytes in the meadow, pushing them to the brink of their survival. We're showcasing uh, the wildlife, the living aspects of the lakes. Okay, because these are living things. Uh, originally, as hard water lakes, they used to enjoy really great uh, water clarity. They were rather nutrient poor and uh, therefore had a characteristic um, aquatic community. For example, the uh, the carophyte uh, meadows growing on the, uh, on the lake bottom. They were also known for their large numbers of uh, white-clawed crayfish that were living here. And both the uh, carophytes are very much on the uh, retreat and the crayfish numbers have also uh, declined in recent years. So we are uh, doing water quality uh, surveys, uh, we're doing um, crayfish surveys and uh, we are taking sediment samples to learn about the uh, nutrient content in the uh, lake sedi sediments. What the project is trying to achieve is uh, preserving the state that the, uh, the lakes were in as a nutrient poor environment and to uh, basically extend that window uh, within, its, within the life of these uh, special landscape uh, features. Uh, the lakes can hopefully be brought back to a state where they once were as more nutrient poor environments that uh, would uh, harbor those uh, rare species that are currently on the retreat. So if we value this kind of a special legacy, like European recognized lakes in this area here. And if we don't want to see what has happened in this instance, we have got to do a rethink and begin to really value the, the, the aquatic environment here. Not just the clear water lakes, but the wetlands surrounding them, because those are the filters, the um, landscape features that keep lakes healthy. We are searching for ways to minimise further nutrients reaching the lakes from surrounding land. Whatever the next step entails for the cluster of lakes, preserving them will require a collaborative partnership between farmers, businesses, public agencies, local communities, anglers and all other lake users. Everyone living or visiting in the catchment has a part to play in protecting the water while enjoying and appreciating its unique characteristics for generations to come.